having a new client or switching the software and need to enter all these prior year carryovers? I know how frustrating it could be sometimes. So let me show you where to enter them and explain you the concept behind the top five common carryovers from last year. So I'll start with showing the prior year tax return and show you where carryovers are coming from. Then I'll show you how to, where to enter them in the tax software and where they should show up on the current year tax form. Let's dive in. So let's start with the most common and the most important one, which is net operating losses. Uh, so first of all, like this is how prior year tax return looks like. And that's kind of how we know it, there were some prior net operating losses last year. So they would show up under schedule one, line A, we can see there is a loss right here. And also when we scroll down, we would see like all this like NLOs and net operating losses stuff, and it will be net, net operating loss carryover to 2023, right? Uh, that's good case scenario but they actually show us what carryovers are to the next year uh, so usually net operating losses are generated like let's say the client had um they had like a schedule c loss last year which they couldn't deduct so it's a business losses from prior years they were not able to use it in prior years so they carried over uh, carry forward indefinitely and start in 2021 they cannot carry back and they also limited to 80% of income deduct deductibility, right? Uh, so, uh, so let's. So basically, when I look at this return, I see the total loss on prior year tax return was 6,081, right? So it consisted of a couple um, net operating losses from a couple of years. So for example, here it says 2015 annual utilization. So this one was from 2015. So I would just put it here. Then this part was from 2016, 2016, and then there is part of it was from 20, uh, 2020, 2020 annual utilization, right? And all this stuff is it's carried forward to tax year 2023. And it ties to our amount right here, right? So this is our total loss. This is what will be carried forward to the next year. Uh, let me show you now how to enter it in the tax software, in the current year tax software. So this was the prior year tax return, and now we're switching to current year um, tax preparation, which is 2023. Alrighty, guys. So in Lacer tax software, it's actually super easy to find where to enter, at least NOLs for sure. So here they have a separate section, it calls NOL. So I just went there and already entered the numbers from our example to save us some time. So here I enter our 2015, 2016 and 2020 carry NOL carry overs to 2023, right? Uh, so important note, because what I did, I actually didn't enter this section carry over available in 2023. And guess what happened? It just didn't, um, it just didn't appear on a schedule I wanted. So it just didn't show up. So you have to enter those amounts. Those are mandatory. So now when we look on the schedule, we can see that on schedule one i'm so sorry we can see our 8a line 8a showing up our net of operating losses and because we have income this year is actually will be all of it will be used this year and can offset income so it ties to our um, excel schedule so we're good to go so that's how we enter nol carryovers in lacert Capital gain losses are only deducted up to 3k a year and then they can be carry forward indefinitely as well as an NOL. Uh, so basically we look at Schedule D. So this is prior year tax return 2022 and we have short term uh, losses of this amount, right? And then we have uh, long term losses of 5,082. And so the total is 8,041 but only 3000 is deductible right uh, so now we have a questions like from those 3000 
are we taking short term or long term or a mix like what is the order so basically the order is we always take uh, we deduct short term gains first and then whatever's carry forward will be or from short term gains or from long term gains what it actually means so here's short term here's long term so what is used first so first we use short term so we'll use this amount and also we'll use the rest from long term gains long term gains right uh, so basically the carry over would be the difference between whatever we had used here and what we used in 2022 so it will be smaller and the nature uh, of uh, carry forward gains that will be able to carry forward to 2023 and deduct on 2023 your tax return will be long-term capital losses and uh, yeah so that's that's a thing this is what irs does and basically it's just because those rates are um, taxable from yeah, as an ordinary income right rates and those are under capital gain losses so they don't want you to do tax planning based on like short term carrying forward one or another. But anyways, so this is what gets deducted short term and whatever left over from long term gains is getting carried forward. So now what we need to enter in 2023 tax return is um, long term capital losses carry forward of the 5041. So let me show you how to enter it in a tax software now. So for Schedule D, I actually couldn't find it uh, anywhere on uh, details. It's not straightforward for me. So I went to the form and uh, I just right click under Capital Loss Carryover Entry. And it took me to this. I mean, actually, it's under Disposition Schedule D, but it's right like right here. Schedule D Loss Carryovers. And we can enter our short term or long term gains. And obviously, if state is different, we can enter them. And if AMT gain or losses are different, we can enter them as well. A foreign tax credit can be carried back uh, one year and can 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 be for carry forward ten years. So if you have um, something like um, like let's say right here on the schedule, it shows what years the carry overs are from so after 10 years it's gonna expire so this thing can expire for next year right uh so when we enter so let me show you where it show up, shows up so this is our foreign tax credit form form 1116 and here we can see this was foreign taxes in the current year which was 2022 and right here it shows here's our total um uh, foreign tax is this here and this is our carry over from last year which is also listed in here right so this is summary for all the years um, but because there is no enough um, foreign income on this current year uh, only part of it was able they were able to deduct so they only deducted 374 so what happens now so now the difference between um sorry um 859 which is current year taxes right here and whatever was able to be were able to deduct 374 will be um the difference will be carried forward to the next year as a, a taxes from 2022 so this amount uh to make it a little bit more simple and so we don't have to enter each year in a tax software i uh let's pretend this was from uh, no, okay, we'll enter just a couple numbers. So I'll enter 2012, sorry, 2012, and I pretend the rest is, um, and the rest was from 2021, right? So now, <clears throat> sorry, my bad. So I'm trying to see what would be, oops. Okay, that happens. <laughs> 2772 minus 737. Okay, so this is uh, for example, so make it simple to do it in a tax software. This amount will be from 2012, right, right here. And everything else we pretend is a total from 2021. 20, uh, so the total still stays the same, 2772. So this thing will expire in 2023 because it's it's it can only be carry forward 10 years right so this will be only carry overs to 2021 
I'm sorry, to 2023, will only carry over the foreign tax credit uh, from year 2022 and everything before, I mean, after 2012, but not 2012 because that will expire. So now I'm just going to delete this and this should be our uh, total credit that we need to enter in the tax software. Um, sorry, I should probably learn how to use Excel before I record videos, but I think I knew how to do it. But anyways, let me show you the tax software. I am actually much better in the tax softwares. <laughs> Let's switch to uh, the tax software now. So for foreign tax credit, I went under um, screen 35.2 and there is foreign tax credits right here. And I just enter foreign tax credit paid and available. So we need to enter foreign tax carryover uh, in this last um, place as well, because it's just not going to carry over. So now when I look at my form 1116 with a foreign tax credit, I see right here, they carry over saved. So section 179 is only deductible if the, if we have um, taxable income. If we don't have taxable income and we have a loss, um, the section 179 will be carried forward to the next year. So when, that, when does it show up? Because not every tax software, not every tax return we receive will have carryovers list. So some of them we have to go to the forms and find it. So this is our depreciation form from last year. And here we have section that says carry over uh, disallowed deduction on your 2021. So this was carry over from 2021, carry forward to 2022. Now they were not able to deduct it this year, 2022 as well. So now this carry over uh, is disallowed deduction and now it's carry forward to 2023. So basically we need to enter in the tax software and it has show up on this line 10 of our form 4562. So one of the most confusing for me when where to enter our um, section 179 carryovers. So I actually spent quite a of time looking for it. And actually when I found it, we have to go to our schedule C and here we have section 179 carryover. Now we see our carryover disallowed deduction from year 2022 appears on our schedule. So now, well, the last one, but the not the mo it's also super important carryover, right? QBI carryover. Uh, so what happens like last year, let's say we have this QBI income, I mean loss pretty much, and we were not able to deduct it last year, right? Uh, so basically what happens is uh, we'll because we were not able we had some like okay here in 2022 we have this qualified business carry forward from prior year it will loss of 8386 so we were not able to use it but we did offset this income in 2022 but we still have like 7357 left so that will be carry forward to next year so we can also offset qbi income next year as well uh, so how we see is that we have some carryovers. So we go to form 8995, which is qualified business income. And right here we see on line 16, total business loss carry forward. And we have this amount right here. Some softwares will have carryovers to 2023 section, but not all of them. So we have to be careful. Uh, so basically, uh, this thing will be carry forward to the next year. And this is what we need to enter in the tax software. So let's switch to the tax, tax software right now. UBI deduction wasn't really like easy for me to find as well because it's we enter it under net operating losses we have this QBI loss carryover section so when we enter it there it actually shows up under our line three well good job everyone hope this video was helpful please comment below if there's any carryovers any other carryovers you want me to show you where to enter and also, as a side note, I also send, sell online courses on a different tax software, how to do individual and business tax preparation. So if you're interested, uh, visit my website, remotecpanla.com. And thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.